Hi folks, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at Greyhound Air. In 1996, Greyhound Canada, the long distance coach company, teamed up with Kelowna Flightcraft to form Greyhound Air. The airline would operate seven Boeing 727 trijets on flights from Ottawa, Toronto and Hamilton in the east and Edmonton, Calgary, Kelowna and Vancouver in the west, with Winnipeg serving as a central hub. Aside from Edmonton and Kelowna, the other cities would see a twice a day service with all flights timed to offer connections in Winnipeg. Aside from the airline's eight destinations, Greyhound Air also allowed connections onto its long distance coach service giving passengers access to around 1100 destinations within Canada. Greyhound Air didn't use travel agents, instead tickets could be purchased at the airport, a Greyhound bus ticket office or by phoning the reservations number. The telephone number would feature prominently on their aircraft, though there was another reason for that. Kelowna Flightcraft were the ones responsible for operating Greyhound Air. They owned and operated the aircraft with their own crews on their own certification. Greyhound was responsible for the reservations and ticketing, marketing and branding of the company. The services of Kelowna were chartered in for the Greyhound operation, making them what is considered a paper airline. Due to Kelowna operating the aircraft on their own certificate, it wasn't possible under Canadian law for the aircraft to sport Greyhound titles. The livery was fairly decent, aside from the very large phone number that is. The fuselage was mostly white with a red band towards the rear, followed by blue wrapping up along the rear of the fuselage and onto the tail. The Greyhound name may not have been allowed on the aircraft, but their logo sure was, and so a stylized Greyhound was added to the tail and faced forwards towards the front of the aircraft. These aircraft had been acquired by Kelowna specifically for the Greyhound contract. Incidentally, one of these aircraft was formerly with Pride Air. The airline also ran a fairly memorable marketing campaign in which a Greyhound would pee on the landing gear of an aircraft accompanied by the slogan, We're Marking New Territory. The pooch used in the adverts was a retired racing greyhound named Ptolemy, or Tolly to his handlers. Ptolemy was an ancient Egyptian astronomer, philosopher, geographer and mathematician. I am of course referring to the original Ptolemy and not Pucci. Greyhound Air took to the skies on Monday July 8, 1996, initially with six aircraft though a seventh would join the fleet a few months later. Greyhound's airfares were considerably lower than the competition, even their full fare economy ticket was up to 60% cheaper than the competition. Greyhound also offered discounted tickets too, meaning Canadians were able to fly cross-country for a fraction of the prices charged by Air Canada and Canadian Airlines. Unlike the more established carriers of the time, Greyhound didn't have any restrictions such as Saturday night stay on their tickets. They also eliminated the need to buy tickets at least seven days in advance in order to get the cheapest fare. Dick Heisman, Greyhound's president and chief executive, said, The rules are absolutely different and much more flexible, adding that the chance that you can buy cheaper if you buy earlier is dead, but the fact that you can buy cheap any time is what we need to get across. Greyhound Air also established Travel Rewards, a frequent flyer program which allowed passengers to redeem for anything from a free express courier shipment to a free round trip. The Priority One Club was introduced as well, though the main benefit of this was that if a club member was experiencing a non-weather related delay of more than two hours, they would be offered a ticket on another carrier. On the subject of tickets, upon making a reservation, Greyhound Air passengers were given a confirmation number and could then collect their tickets at the airport or a Greyhound bus station. The ticket was actually issued on the same cardstock as their bus tickets rather than those used by other airlines. This was because Greyhound Air piggybacked off their existing bus company reservation system. This would save the airline a lot of money in setting up and running a CRS, but it also allowed the free booking of bus to plane to bus travel. During the summer of 1996, Greyhound had a good season, with fairly good load factors. The winter wasn't so great, though this had been expected. What wasn't expected, however, was the takeover of Greyhound Air's parent company, Greyhound Canada. In early September 1997, it was announced that Laidlaw Incorporated was to acquire Greyhound Canada for 61 million Canadian dollars. The airline would not be included in the sale. In fact, it was a precondition of the takeover offer that Greyhound Air ceased operations. With less than two weeks notice, on September 21st 1997, Flying Dog Airlines was put to sleep. So, what went wrong? The shortest answer is the takeover. The new owners, Laidlaw, did not want Greyhound Air and thus closed it down. As usual, however, there is a much longer answer. 
Greyhound Air had reportedly made losses of around 28 million Canadian dollars since it was launched, some of which was down to problems prior to starting flying, but most of the losses were made during the quieter winter months. Laidlaw required Greyhound mere weeks before the start of the winter 1997 season. They weren't keen on subsidising the airline through the winter, so saw a way out and took it. To be fair to Laidlaw, they had no previous experience in the aviation industry, and it was considered a big financial risk to take on Greyhound Air, especially when it had not only never broken even, but was about to need major support over the winter. I always like to deliver a twist to the tale, however, and this one, while unsubstantiated, is a bit of a doozy. There was a strong rumour that Laidlaw killed off Greyhound Air as they owned quite a few shares in Air Canada. Unfortunately, there is no way to prove or disprove that, and while some may say that Laidlaw could have instead sold Greyhound Air, one needs to remember that their reservation system was tied to that of the coach company, and aside from that, it was just a name on a chartered aircraft. I earlier mentioned that Greyhound Air made quite a loss during their startup phase. This was down to the airline not being granted regulatory approval. Initially, 68% of the company was to be owned by Dialcorp, based in Scottsdale, Arizona. The history of Dial Corporation is best left to the company man, so hit him up with that suggestion if you want to know more. After transferring majority ownership north of the border, approval was granted and this gave Greyhound Air its wings. A key issue here was timing. The rejection occurred in April and it took a while to get re-approved. Greyhound Air took to the skies in July some four months later. Crucially, what would have been profitable summer months. Back in 1996, the Canadian skies were dominated by Air Canada and Canadian Airlines. The charter airlines like Canada 3000, Royal Aviation and Sky Service hadn't yet begun to dabble in scheduled flying. The airfares were considered by some to be ludicrously high, but once three new low-cost carriers began flying in 1996 and 97, those airfares dropped. Greyhound was one, VistaJet was another, and both were gone. The third, however, was WestJet, and they're still around. In fact, they're now Canada's second largest airline. Those three airlines managed to reverse a long decline in the country's air traffic. Passenger numbers on some routes had more than doubled, and passenger numbers grew more than 20% nationwide. Directly or indirectly, thanks to those airlines, more Canadians were flying than ever before. Unfortunately, we'll never know if this Greyhound would have gone the distance. They introduced a frequent flyer program pretty much from the off compared to, say, Kiwi, who despite trying to chase business travellers realised too late that they needed an FFP. Today, many airlines have been called Greyhound Air, using it as a derogatory term comparing that carrier to the Greyhound bus. Or, in the UK, since we don't have Greyhound, it would be National Express, and almost always used against Ryanair. I've gone off topic here, I think. Where was I? Um, so, people use Greyhound as a derogatory term for some airlines, but the truth is that the real Greyhound Air not only opened up hundreds of communities across Canada, they also played a big part in driving down the price of tickets and opening up air travel to a whole nation. Until next time, thanks for watching.